OneDrive is Microsoft's cloud storage application, and it works just as well on an Apple Mac as it does in Windows. In fact, more and more Mac users are using it as part of Microsoft Office. Think of cloud storage as a very large external hard drive that you access using the Internet. You can store documents and files on remote servers using exactly the same file structure as you do on your MacBook or your iMac. Once installed, OneDrive looks just like a local hard drive, but any files or folders you add will be automatically stored in the cloud. And you only need one cloud storage account to manage the files from any device, Mac, Windows or even your iPad. Hence the name OneDrive. For personal use, you can get 5 gigabytes of OneDrive storage for free, or you can pay $2 a month for 50 gigabytes by going to www.onedrive.com and signing up to their standalone package. But this rather defeats the point of OneDrive, which is its integration with Microsoft Office. If all you need is free cloud storage, there are better options available. Google Drive currently gives you 15 gigabytes for free. But for around $6 a month, you'll get one terabyte of OneDrive storage together with all the usual Office tools like Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook. OneDrive only really makes sense as a cloud storage choice if you use it as part of Microsoft Office. There are other options for business use, so it's worth checking them all out before you decide. When you download OneDrive and open it for the first time, it'll ask you which files you want to sync. Synchronizing your files means that each device you use will see the latest cloud-stored version. It's a great way to avoid creating different and conflicting versions of your files. Once you've made your choice, OneDrive will tell you which devices your files are synced to and invite you to open your new drive. You'll see a new cloud icon in the Finder. This is your new cloud storage drive. As with any other file or folder, you can save to OneDrive's cloud servers simply by dragging and dropping it from your desktop or by saving files directly to the OneDrive folder. Once saved to your local OneDrive folder, OneDrive saves an identical copy to its cloud server, but it does a lot more than that. With Internet access, you can access that file from any other computer anywhere, simply by logging on to your OneDrive account. It's completely transparent to the operating system, so you can use Windows or Mac. That gives you some important advantages. First, you no longer have to email a copy of the file to yourself if you want to work on it on another machine, or even another operating system. You can access it directly online. And because OneDrive syncs your files across all your local machines, you won't create conflicting copies. Secondly, you can save only in the cloud, thereby saving space on your own hard drive. Helpful if you've got a laptop with only a small amount of storage, but it's also useful for basic security. And thirdly, although it's not really a backup tool, your files and documents will be safe even if your hard drive fails or your computer is stolen. Let's look a little more closely at the local folder. Click on the cloud icon to open it. You'll see all the usual Mac options for viewing your files, cover flow, columns, lists, or icons. Right click on a file and you'll see that OneDrive has added to the usual Mac options. Click on the blue share icon and you'll get a pop-up with a lot more share options. Click on this panel here. There are four choices. I want to share with a specific person. There's another very important setting right here. You can either grant editing privileges or prevent editing. Note that editing is allowed by default, so you'll need to uncheck the box if you don't want the recipient to be able to make changes to your file. Once you've made your choices, click Apply, and you'll be able to enter the email address of your chosen recipient and add a short message if you want. There are two sending options. 
You can either send by email here or click copy link, which will copy the link to your clipboard so you can send it in your chosen social media app. And finally, you can delete a file locally and it will be deleted in the cloud. Now let's look at the same file in the cloud. Log on to your OneDrive account using your browser. Now you can see the same file as it's stored in the cloud. Note first the little blue lines around the name of the file. This tells you that it's a new file. The headings along the top have down arrows, indicating that you can change the order of appearance if you've got more than one file. Look closely at the final column. It tells you whether or not the file is being shared with anyone. Left-click on the word Shared, and OneDrive gives you a pop-up box to manage the sharing. You can cancel the sharing links if you want to, but I'm happy to keep these on the file. Let's now look at the headings along the top of the cloud view. These change depending on whether you're working with a file or a folder. We'll start by looking at the headings for a single file. Select the file by clicking to the left of the file name. You'll see the top level options change. You can roll the cursor over each option for a simple tooltip. The first option, Open, will open the document online. Left click on the second, Share, to see a range of options to share the document with others. Look closely at this panel. Left click it for more options. There are two important options that are not immediately obvious. Allowing others to edit your document is checked by default. Uncheck it if you don't want to give others editing permission. And you can specify a time limit for the link, after which it will expire. Copying gives you a similar link, but will copy the link to your clipboard so you can send it via social media. You get the same options as for sharing. The next few are self-explanatory. Download, Delete, Move, Copy and Rename. But the Flow option is a lot more complex, and we'll need a whole video to demonstrate this feature. Briefly, it allows you to predetermine a set of actions for the file, sending it to a group of people in a particular order, for example. And finally, version history is very useful. You can check the history of amendments and changes to the file and revert to a former version if necessary. The options for your folders are similar. You can share, copy link, download, delete, move the folder or copy it somewhere else, or rename it. Look on the left-hand side of the cloud page. The headings are straightforward. Files lists the live files currently saved to the cloud. Recent gives you a history of the files you've opened or worked on. Shared gives me two options. I can see those files that other people have shared with me. Here it's a set of marketing videos that Jonathan shared with me. Or I can see those files I've shared with other people. And lastly, I can open the recycle bin. Select all to delete or restore all of them, or select them individually. And finally, there's the option to sync your files and folders to each of your local machines. This is a very useful option, and it means that each machine will have the same most recent version of that file. It's a really great option that prevents you from creating multiple different versions of the same file. Well, that's a very quick overview of Microsoft's excellent OneDrive for Windows. The best way to get to know it is to play a bit with it. Create a few test files and folders to get an idea of exactly what it can do for you. And if you need more support, contact eTop Technology. We're here to help. If you like these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you found this video helpful, check out some of our more recent videos. And if you're looking for a new IT partner, please visit our website.